episode. Uh, today we're going to actually talk about uh, the um, the cardiac and venous curve. Uh, this is one of the uh, one of the most important lectures that we're going to talk about. And as we go forward, uh, we're going to actually discuss about we're going to try to define also what is cardiac, uh, um, what is the cardiac output is, and also the what is what is mean by the all this venous curve. Uh, I mean, we have actually discussed a lot about uh, uh, this in our previous lectures, and I do want you to actually uh, go and watch the lectures about uh, cardiac output. Uh, uh, but before we go uh, for the detail, uh, here we're going to actually uh, look at the different graphs and try to look at how the graph can actually alter based on the if there's additions of blood volumes or if we give some sort, of, sort of like a, a positive inotropic drugs or uh, sort of like negative inotropic drugs, how this graph can shift, uh, what are the changes that you get to see it uh, uh, in your venous returns or in cardiac output. So we're going to more focus on the graph in this lecture today. All right. So uh, before we go, uh, I would like to talk about a uh, quick review of some of the stuff. Like as you know, like cardiac output is actually equal to your stroke volume times heart rate, right? And your stroke volume itself depends on your end diastolic volumes, right? And this end diastolic volume was also say preload, right? And this preload itself is depends on your your filling time of your ventricles, right? The diastolic filling times of the uh, of the your ventricles, and this diastolic filling times itself depends on what? Uh, itself depends on uh, obviously itself depends on uh, you can even say your left atrial pressures or your right atrial pressure, right? And then this itself, right? Left atrial, the itself depends on your venous. Return. So like if you talk about left atrial pressure, we're talking about the the venous blood, the oxygenated blood that is coming from uh, of lungs, right? And then obviously, if you talk about the right atrial pressure, we're talking about the mixed venous blood, right? Uh, from the coming from your inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, because it is bringing the deoxygenated blood from this upper part of the body and also lower part of the body, right, to the right atrial pressure. And then this right atrial pressure and the venous returns are, we have to understand how the relationships are. Before even I want to go for the details part, I'd like to like quickly talk about you know, some of the concepts here. If I make this graph, let's say this is my, uh, we'll say this is, okay, here, let's make it a little bit from here. Now, if I make this uh, graph right here, right, if I make this, uh, we can make this a graph as like let's say, and then we can make this. Remember your internal jugular veins and then your subclavian veins when they come together, it makes your superior vena cava, and we can make the internal jugular vein, okay? And then this is subclavian veins, and it makes this. And obviously we can represent this inferior vena cava, right? And then obviously this goes to your lungs, okay? We can make it as a lungs right here. And then remember this is going to be my. Let's say this is my left ventricles aorta and then we can see this pulmonary capillaries and it's coming here and then going to this one so just like a quick diagram like a diagram graph right so basically what is happening here is that uh, this is my right atrium right and then we talk about this is this is my all this blood the blood that is accumulated here here all this we call this blood okay and this we represent as like pressures of your systemic filling or we can say missed, uh, me, mean systemic filling pressure. If your heart has stopped working or ha your heart has stopped contracting, whatever the blood actually accumulated on your veins and arterial sides, we call that as a miss, mean systemic volume of the blood or mean systemic filling pressures. Okay, that's what we, and that, the volume of blood, whatever generated pressure, that we call them as a pressure of systemic filling, okay? And you probably have, probably have used to seeing mean systemic filling pressure, right? Uh, same thing, or uh, uh, or mean systemic pressure, or same thing. So, and then after that, what is happening? Uh, what is also to understand is that, look, this is bringing the oxygen in the blood, right? And remember, this aorta side, quickly, if you want to talk about this, remember that your aorta are elastic, right? Because they have a thicker wall. And then whenever there's thicker wall, what's going to happen is that when the aorta gets distended, whenever the blood, the cardiac output is coming out, remember, cardiac output is also equal to aortic pressure divided by your TPR. Right, total pressure resistance, or even the systemic vascular resistance, and cardiac outputs and total pressure resistance are inversely proportional to one another. So really, what happens is that whenever the cardiac out, whenever the blood comes in, what happens? The aorta gets distended, but then aorta has like the lot of elastic properties because elastic they have this uh, recoil tendency. So if you see elastic elastic elasticity of your 
aorta or your arteries, what happens is that there is something called they can able to generate pressure, high pressure over volume. So remember, they that because of the elastic property, they were able to actually generate more pressure uh, to to propel the blood from this side to the venous side, right? So because of that, this we call them elastic is equal to delta change in delta over delta vo, delta v, which means that because of whatever the volume that comes in, they were able to generate a lot of pressure. We call them as a stress stress volume. Okay, but if you come back on my this side right here, this is my let's say the 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 vein, vein, venous side or vein side. What happens is that these guys are very very thin wall. So which basically means that they have capacity or compliant. They're very very compliant. And if you remember the compliant, they have because of compliancy. What happens is that whenever the blood comes in here, they can able to sort of like distend. Because there is increase in diameter, so whenever there is increase in diameter, the more compliant that means they can accommodate more volume. And when can they can distend more? That means they would, doesn't have to generate enough pressure. That means there's a volume over pressure, uh, which basically means is that because of the, the distensibility, the capability, what happens is that they can accommodate more volume of the blood. So we call them as on stress, on stress volume. All right, this on stress volume on the venous side now. This on stress volumes obviously they can change based on the or based on the let's say if I give a veno let's say if I give a drugs like veno motor uh, drugs or any sort of like constriction on the veins that's going what's going to happen is that when you do constrictions of of the vein let's quickly if I talk about uh, this vein uh, what is going to happen is that when I constrict it what's going to happen is that the capacity sense like whatever the, that is going to work, that is going to get it's going to get decreased right so that means the diameters here are going to decrease. When the diameter gets decreased, it will generate a little more pressure to actually propel the blood into the right atrium. Plus, the volume that's accumulated here, because usually normally veins uh, work as a reservoir, right? So, usually what happens is uh, first the mobilizations happen, meaning they were able to mobile or they were able to, uh, uh, they were able to uh, send and propel the blood from the vena cava, from the, this side to right atrium, that one. And also, other things that your capacity is when there's a decrease in the diameter, which means they'll ever generate a little more pressure, but then your mean system in volume that will go down, right? Because because of the venum motor torque. And remember, usually normally here there's like a pressure, low pressure, right? In the venous side, we say mean system pressure is about seven millimeters of mercury. Remember, guys, if my pressure is high here, let's say if I extend, do you think the pressure would be able to from here, we would be able to propel the blood? From here to here, we probably would not able to do right. That's the reason why. What happens is that if there's already high pressure here, we would not able to put the blood in because the low from the, the the blood cannot move from low pressure to high. It has to be. It has to go from high pressure to low pressure. So that which means the right atrial pressure has to be less than the pressure in the vein in order to in order to uh, to blood to move from from the vena from the vein to the right atrium. So the right atrium is inversely proportional. To your your venous return, okay, and so if you have decrease in right atrial pressure, you need to have increase in venous return. So I can even write this as venous return is equal to one over right atrial pressure or center of venous pressure. So basically means that if you increase your right atrial pressure, you decrease your venous return. If you decrease your right atrial pressure, you increase your venous return. That's what it means. But if you increase your right atrial pressure, what happens is that you increase in more filling on the ventricles. That means you increase your cardiac output. Okay, so there's a relationship between the cardiac output with the venous return. That means if you increase the venous, you also increase your cardiac output, right? If you so this is the this relationship uh, that you have to understand really well, and we'll look at it you know, graphically well too. And the, re the reason why I talk about stress volume is because remember, with the unstressed volume, with the uh, with the constrictions, what happens that could turn into the stress volume, and that can will able to generate enough pressure to propel the blood out. This pressure right here, we call the central venous pressures. And then you often see like this center venous pressure right here. But basically, what happens is that the, the center venous pressure is what happens is that there's no veins or no valve actually uh, to in before your SVC actually drains the blood into right atrium. Because of that, whatever 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 the pressure right here, it could be actually equal to your right atrial pressure. That's the reason why a lot of times we can actually the right atrial pressure, right atrial pressure, and your uh, your center venous pressure are interchangeable, right? Uh, interchangeable. So we usually say maybe they are, they are 
about the scene. All right. Now, so now we'll look at all these kind of things in you know, a graphically and see how this or graphically is going to be turned out to be look like. Okay. Now we're going to see graphically. We have to understand this our uh, concept really well. And obviously, we're talking about the guy. The graphs of the cardiac output and the venous return graph, right? So now, we'll say in this graph, remember, we have to understand this concept really well, right? So use it, remember, as I said, the mean system graph, and also, like, you know, let me uh, also have to tell you guys something about, you know, the venous return, as I said, the, even earlier, I said venous return is equal to cardiac output, right? Because remember, cardiac output normally was like 5 liter per minute, right? And the way they find venous return is actually, look, if I calculate, in mathematically, if I do this, venous return has an equation of like the pressures of systemic feeling pressure minus you have a right atrial pressure over your what is this called called uh, your your pressures of your uh, venous you can say this actually resistance of venous return you can see that okay so if I do the venous return and I have a, usually it's about seven millimeters of mercury of the pressure if I do that and let's say for our case we'll say minus uh, Minus uh, right at the zero uh, millimeters of mercury per hour case, and then with the resistance is usually provided by it's about like you know 1.4 millimeters of mercury, all right, uh, liter per minute. So if I do this way, I think I should be able to get five liter per minute. So this is going to be equal to my cardiac output. You see that that relationship. So that's why we often say venous return is equal to cardiac output. Mathematically, if you wanna, if you want to look at that way too. All right. Now, now let's make this graph in a more. And then remember, your your graph we usually say, and usually what happens is that uh, we'll make this as a cardiac output graph here right now. Right. So we often say that cardiac output is depend on stroke volumes, and stroke volume depends on diastolic volume, and diastolic is Preload, right? So preload dependence cardiac output is called so preload dependence cardiac output is called cardiac function curve. Okay, that's what the graph represents. So usually, let's say this graph right here. We'll say this is zero right here, right? And then we're going to make this as uh, I don't know. We'll just as we go, we'll make this graph. And then obviously, uh, we'll make this as like my seven millimeter mercury that is going to be my mean systemic pressure okay and then obviously you have to talk about the central okay make this one you have a central venous pressure millimeters of mercury or we can say right atrial pressure same thing right now usually what happens is that as remember we said as right atrial pressure increases the cardiac output to because right atrial pressure is telling you the ventricle thing, right? So usually your graph should look like this. If, it, if I make it actually look something like this, right? So this basically tells you, tells you, and then it tells you as you increase your right atrial pressure right here, you increase this here. Cardiac output. So we'll make this as like let's say no. That's what we say, right? And then venous return, which basically means what is the venous return? Venous return graph means the the collapsed on the lungs okay and then really usually it looks something like this and you know the way they did it is actually uh you know usually in a normal case we say this graph like look usually this is a y and we say this x right and usually normally graph should be this right atrial pressure should be up here and then your venous return graph should be look like that right normally it should be look like this but then if they would do that then then, then they would, it would exactly look like cardiac output with your a center of venous pressure, okay? So because of that, they have to flip this graph. So what they did, they put right atrial pressure, they put venous return on your y-axis, and then they put right atrial pressure on the x-axis. That's what they did. That's what they flipped. That's what we have to read differently too. So this this is dependent. This is a dependent variable right atrial pressure, right? Or center of venous pressure. So what happens is you, you see graph like this, and then you have a little bit going down, and then you have a look like this. So this phase right here, this is called plateau phase, and this is called transitional zone, and the slope down. This plateau is basically means your veins has collapsed completely, and these are usually runs in negative pressure. That means it can no longer for the collapse, and there will be no increase in venous return. That's what this is. Uh, that's what that uh, plateau tells you about, right? And 
the way we read it, the way we read it is like it could be like this could be like zero and this could be a negative two, negative four, and this could be two, let's say four, three, four, like that. So so as you decrease your so this is gonna say what Venus return right. So as you decrease your Venus return, or so you as you decrease your radiative pressure, the Venus return increases. That's what this graph graph tells So you always want to read as you decrease it, as you decrease it, your Venus return increases. So look, this point is right here. Look, this point right here is working around this point. Venus return is here. This point is going here. Look at the Venus return is here. So like, see, so as you decrease it, the Venus return increases. That's what this graph tells you, all right? Or as you increase this, the Venus, as you increase the radiative pressure, your Venus return decreases, right? And this graph is usually called as, which is the, this graph, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to make it right here, all right? And then we'll say this one graph here. And this is my point where this works, right? And this one will say, this one, look. Okay, we'll make now here, this point right here, we'll make this point right here is about like two millimeters of mercury, okay? Oh, this is all two, all right? And then we'll make this as two, uh, we'll just say four, and this is six, and we'll say this is negative two, and negative four, and then we can just say this is also like two, four, and it was a six millimeters of mercury for our case, and it was an eight, and this is 10, all right? So for this case, we'll say six liter per minute. Six liters, the cardiac output is six liter per minute for this person, all right? And usually that's also normal. But this point is, we call this point as a, we can write it down in different colors with it. It's called equilibrium point, all right? And this is where your heart is working at this phase right now, at the, at the two minutes of mercury, all right? And then, uh, obviously with the, let's take the cardiac output with the six liter per minute. And obviously this is gonna be liter per minute. And obviously this graph, we call this as, write it down here, which is called vascular functional functional curve, all right? This is cardiac. This is represents cardiac function, which represents your cardiac output, right? And this is your, uh, your vascular functional curve. And this is usually normal vascular functional curve, right? Now, we have to see this graph in a different way now. Different way now, let's say. So let's say how this graph can change with certain certain stimulations, right? So if I quickly make this graph again, always the normal first, and then we'll see how this is gonna happen. We'll talk about cardiac output first, right? So if I do this, I mean if I do this, I'll just quickly make this graph like this, right? Okay. Now and then obviously I'll make Look, so this point is normal, and this is, we said seven millimeters of mercury pressure, right? We said that. And then obviously this represents your central venous pressure, or we can even say right to your pressure, right? And this is what they're working at the two millimeters of mercury, right? And obviously this is mercury. Now, if this is the case, then let's say I give some kind of drugs. Like let's say I give like uh, some kind of positive inotropic drugs, like uh, cardiac uh, glycosides, like atropine, or maybe phosphodiester innovators uh, or glucagon even hormones like that, right? So if I'm going to increase my contractibility of this graph, what's going to happen is that look, if I increase my contractibility, remember with remember from your uh, your your cardiac cycle or whenever we contract we, we increase contractibility with the person and what happens? There's always an increase in cardiac output, right? So what is the graph is going to look like if I increase my cardiac output? So the graph is always going to look like it's going to go all the way. Okay, we'll make this, okay, hold on. We'll make it more linear to this. And then maybe it will level up like this. I look at the, how my point is now. My point is right here. So it went upward, right? And then it went leftward, right? That means my, this point right here was my six liter per minute. Now if you see this would probably like eight liter per minute. So this is, that's the source that, look. That's source that, look. What is happening here? As my, look. It's going upward, but this is, this go this graph, Basically tells you about the positive inotropic actions, right? With the positive inotropic drugs, I have increased in contractibility, which made this curve, the cardiac functional curve, was able to sit upward and then leftward. So if this point was A point right here, this is B. So it went upward and leftward, right? But let's say if I give negative inotropic drugs, right? Like for example, some kind of beta blockers or calcium center blockers, right? So if I do that, if I give some kind of like like a drug, like a, uh, propan propanolol, right? That's a common one. 
or verapamil, okay? Like these drugs, the negative antidepressant drugs. If I give those drugs, right, would live negative. Like, how this graph is going to sit? If I do this, if I give negative, obviously it's going to go, go negative right here, right? And then it'll probably go like this. So my next point is here right now. So this is A, B, C point. You see? So now it moved. Look, if I go this way, it down, and then it moved right up. So the negative anotropic drugs, what happened is that this graph, that means there is a decrease in cardiac output. So we make this as, let's say, 4.5 liters for our case, all right? And this graph obviously is a cardiac output slash with a venous return, right? And obviously you can say a liter per minute, all right? Now, same thing here too. We talk about this is a venous return curve. So look, what happened with my with my negative anotropic drugs is that tropic drugs is that there was a decrease in cardiac output, right? And then the graph, this the point moves. That means what happens? Look at the pressure. What happens? So if you look at the venous return, though, as you look, this is going to be positive. Look, look, what is going to happen is as you decrease, as you decrease the venous. Look, this is this point is right here. Was a negative by like, so we can make zero this one. So as you decrease your right pressure, what happens? The venous region also increases. That's what he's that's what's telling this with the positive anatomic drugs. So if you if you even see see the graph by the way, right? Now this is the change about whenever you give the positive and negative anatomy drugs. Uh positive anatomy drugs. Now, now let's we'll say we'll make a different graph here. If I make a different graph here, okay, with this draw with this graph, what we're gonna do is Again, we're always going to start with cardiac output is going off this way. Now let's make this a different. Right here, okay? Now, okay, this is 7 mm, obviously central venous pressure right here, right? And this is a mean systemic pressure at the 7 millimeters of marker, right? Now, let's say I give, I increase total peripheral resistance, right? If I increase my total peripheral resistance, what is going to happen? Okay, look, increase my total PPR. What's going to happen with my this graph? So, first, I am going to increase my TPR. And what are the cases we can increase in TPR? Like, for example, if I give up arterial, arterial or arterial constrictor, or some kind of arterial constrictor drugs, right? Or maybe like, you know, that one. So, if that is the case, what's going to happen is that, let's look at the, whenever there's increase in time, remember, remember, we said the equation is correct, output is also equal to your uh, arterial pressure over your TPR, right? Or we can say the system. That means obviously it's going to decrease in cardiac output, right? So if I make this graph, look, what is going to happen with this graph? It is going to be, look, from here, it's going to go, okay, we have to make a different color. I will say, I will say in the red. Look, so this was my normal point. Look how move downward and the rightward for this point, right? Now, that means look my cardiac output. What happens? This is working. This was at six. This has maybe going to five. And then let's say if I give negative, or let's say if I decrease arterial resistance, or let's say uh, I I make arterial dilators. If I give arterial dilator drugs, right? Or maybe like lots of, because of lock, lots of local metabolites. All right. What's going to happen is this graph should be able to sift. Okay, we have to make a different color with this green. Yeah. Look, so you have this one right. So basically, this graph tells you about is that this re this requires about your with the and this is the local metabolized drugs and this is the normal function a b and then this is c you can even see see how the graph could look something like this but this has to do with obviously whenever you increase your uh whenever you do cut your diet or right to the structure right now now we can even say, let's make another graph here and see how this graph can change with this graph. Let's say, instead of this, make it down here, or we'll make it, we'll make it down here. We'll say, all right, obviously, always a normal first. 
this one, right? And then, okay. So here, what happens is that I do, I give a veno, veno motor, meaning a veno constrictor drugs, or I add a blood volume. So when I add a blood volume, right? How does this uh, graph is going to set, right? So whenever, whenever we give a venous return, what is going to happen to my cardiac output? It's going to increase, right? So if I go into make this graph, obviously, my, if I give a venous motor, right? So obviously, I'm going to increase. So let's make this graph right there. So this is going to be right here, right? So obviously, the point here, so it went up, right? So if I give, let's say, a veno dilator, that means, no, sorry, this is going to be a, so veno dilator, that means, uh, what is going to happen is that uh, the veins is going to reserve, or work is going to, is going to get more compliant and then it will accumulate, accumulate more, more blood. In that case, what's going to happen is, okay, with the green power, what's going to be? Look at this. So basically, it really looks like this, right? It's going to look, it's going to work onto this. And then even this one too, actually, if I want to make this very, very clear, actually, you know, because what happens, this, this thing doesn't change. I'm going to make this very clear. Because this point right here, this pressure right here, it doesn't change. Okay, it looks like it's like this thing. So make, let's make this like graph accurately. Like this point. So maybe like point here. So like right here. Because you have to have, because at that time there's also change, there will be change into this venous return too, right? So you have a point, all this graph looks like something like this, right? And this has to do with the increase of venous motor tone. Now, now this is my green. So now, we have to understand some other concept, which is going to be what? Now, let's make a another graph here, right? And then we'll make this, right, again. And then what we're going to do is that, all right. So now, now in this case, what I'm going to do, we're going to. So this is a cardiac output, right? And obviously, this is working the seven million as well. So we're going to see how the graph is going to change when we, whenever we give, like, and this is normal. So obviously, with the normal, that is going to be point here, and then this is going to be point here, okay? And this is going to shift too as we change because there's always going to be. Because there will be going to be problem with the venous return, right? Now, what is going to happen with this one is, let's say, in this one, we give a venom, like, let's say, well, how is this going to happen with the venom motor tone here? If I give a, a venom motor tone, right? Then what is going to happen with this graph with the venous return? Remember, remember, the graph is this, that if you give a venom, you decrease the diameters of the, the, the venous vein, that means, which means that you're going to what? You're going to in. You're going to pull the. You're going to propel the more blood right into the uh, right here. That means you're going to have what? You're going to have a decrease in what? Right at your pressure, and you're going to have increase in cardiac output. Right? So basically, your graph should should look something like this. So maybe at this point now, because of the venous return. Okay, let's make this. As is working at this one is eight millimeters of mercury probably because remember that means there's a there's more volume will add it and this could be maybe add a blood volume so that means this there's a shift on whatever there's a change in preload either because you're adding preload right your preload is going to change because increase in the right so that means this graph the mean system there will be a fact on the mean system if you're impressed too that's why this graph this point would also shift to the eight millimeters of mercury right so if this was my normal what happened is that the my point is now let's actually let's make this This point is now here, right here. So now this graph, they change. So it went up and the right, up and the right, right? This A, let's make this a B. B is normal, right? 
Now let's say if I give some kind of like V no dilator, right? V no dilators, or like yeah, V no dilator dogs, or like there's some kind of blood loss. So there's a blood loss or hemorrhages there. So what's going to happen is that means you lost a blood volume there. When you have a loss of blood volume, or when you were, or maybe you are giving you know, dilator, that means your, your, your lungs, sorry, your veins are actually accumulating the blood into your veins, that means what's going to happen, there will be decrease into this. And obviously this point is working at your about 2 meters of marker, as you said, right? And this represents your right at your pressure, guys. Oh no, this is right at your pressure right here. Right? This is the mean systemic feeling pressure, right? Or about like 7 meters of mercury. So if I do that, what is going to happen with my, my curve graph is you're going to see like this, right? And maybe this is 6 millimeters of mercury. That means, look, if this was my normal, which is, which is 6 liter per minute, right? And this was, let's say, it was 7 liter per minute, right? And then this is going to be, let's say, 5 liters per minute. That means there's a decrease in cardiac output, right? And what is happening to my pressure here? Look, if this is my 2 right here, the point is 2 here right here, right? What happens is, what is going to happen as a decrease my right atrial pressure, right? Look, that means if you have to read it, as my, as my, look, as my decrease my right here, what happened with this? My venous arterial increases, right? And then as my decrease, or as I, as I decrease my right here, my venous arterial of the cough is going to be, going to obviously, so as I, so that means, look, if you look at this, as I decrease my right atrial pressure, obviously my venous arterial increases so much, right? But if you look at this, the graph is, but as the increase my right atrial pressure, what happens to my venous arterial? It decreases, right? That's what is happening here, because the right pressure is going up, going up, and this, this graph <coughs> so the uh, so the relationship between the venous and right atrial pressure. So whenever the venous is increasing, your right atrial right atrial pressure decreases here. And whenever your venous system is increasing, right atrial pressure decreases. Whenever right atrial pressure uh, increases, your venous system is also venous system is decreasing, right? So that's what this graph is. Shows. Now, if we say this graph, we write another graph. In this graph, what we say is, let's say this is my obviously cardiac output, right? And then remember, we say, this is my normal, right? So let's say I increase my total pelvic floor resistance. If I increase my TPI, what is, how does that graph is going to change my, this uh, vascular function of the graph, right? Well, look, with that mean systemic feeling pressure, or this one, this is about 7 millimeters mark, right? But remember, there, with the venous curve, there will be no change on the resistance, right? So with the, with the blood volume. So in that case, if I give increase in TPI, what's going to happen with my venous to down? A lot of resistance that provides artery, right? So that means that's going to decrease what? So will be so this is normal. Look at this half in this graph. If you have and but there's no change. The, the, the graph doesn't say because there's no addition to extra volume, so or there's no loss of the extra volume. And what happens if I give, let's say, you have a give a arterial dilated drugs. So if I give or if you decrease the TPR, okay. If you decrease the TPN, obviously, no, this is cardiac output, right? Venous return. And this is going to be my, let's say, well, we can say the right pressure, we can say central venous pressure, right? And the, obviously, in the millimeters of mercury. We don't want to forget you need two guys, right? Just making sure that. And this is also cardiac output over your venous return. And then, obviously, liter per minute in this graph, obviously, right? And this is going to be negative two here. We can say, all right, negative four here. We can say zero here, two, all that kind of stuff, right? Now, same thing here, zero here, all right? And this point right here is, Normal, which is a, which is a two. We can say four, six, and then seven here. We can say negative two here. We can say negative four here, right? And then this is what it is. Now, now if I say, if I decrease my TPR, like this, and this represents this graph, is saying increase in TPR, right? Or we can say artery constrictor sort of drugs, right? This one now, this graph will I can actually write down here. This graph is saying. What is happening? Artery constrictor, right? Increase in TPI. This graph is representing. This graph is representing decrease in TPI. And this graph is representing normal, right? This graph is representing normal here, right? And obviously, this is an uh, your cardiac constant graph, cardiac constant curve, normal. And this is also a normal, right? Here. And then here we can make this one. What do we say? This one is we're just talking about the, this with we're, we're talking about relationship with the what is happening in the veno motor tone. So this represents the increase in the veno motor tone, or we're saying you add blood volume. 
blood volume, right? Here we say decrease in veno constrictor, okay? Or we say there is sort of a blood loss, like a hemorrhage blood loss, all right? So this is the person. And obviously here we say again, this graph, we're talking about the vascular pumps of how the vascular pumps could change here. And then we said this one is obviously veno constrictor, or let's say we do blood transfusions. Okay, additions of like a blood volume, basically. Right? And this one is obviously we're saying decrease in blood volume. Or we're saying there is a we give a veno dilator and how the graph can sift. Okay, we're talking about that. Now this graph we said that. Now if I give a TPR, what is gonna happen is that if I give let's say decrease in TPR, alright, or vasodilator, sort of a drugs, right? And this graph should look something like this. Or and then okay, we're gonna change this graph a little bit because it's gonna go all the way down up. Like that, and then we'll say block. The point here is A is normal, so this is normal. The B is like decrease in TPR. How, how, look, when you decrease the TPR, what happens? The venous return increases, right? And then obviously, this is representing what? It's a C point, right? The B point is a C point, uh, and then let's say this one is one area increasing. This is a TPR graph. Okay. So basically, the whole idea is that I wanted to let you guys know, like how this venous uh, the vascular function curve, how do you sit with the with the increase in TPR or decrease in TPR to a system, or or with like uh, with the venous constriction or venous motor tone. I want to show you that too, and also I want to do separately how the cardiac output decreases and increases, right? Because what happens is that you could all just combine all of them together and actually work into this too. Like for example, let's say, let's say in this graph, okay, we're going to use this, and we'll combine, let's try to combine all of this graph and how it is going to see. So if I say, this is my, like normal, right? If I say normal of this one, I'll make a blue with this one, right? And it's working at a seven millimeter mark, right? And this is center of venous pressure. Obviously, this is going to be cardiac output, venous return, liter per minute, right? This is normal, right, guys? So let's say if I increase my contractility, right? So if I increase my contractility, what is going to happen? You increase in this graph, right? So with this, what is going to happen is that this curve probably set like this, right? What that means, this was the point number A, right? But then this graph went up and left on this with the cardiac, with the contract. What about the venous return? This probably venous return also went increase, right? So my venous return would probably going to be right in the red for this one. Oh, so look at the point here. So you're going to have another point right here, look. This A point here, you can have a B point. So this this tells you about the, the increase in venous return. Okay, with the increase in contractile rate, there will be increase in venous return too, right? Yeah. Because there is a more cardiac output. Now let's say with the other way, if I decrease it, what is gonna happen? This graph we should look out. Like this is a point right here, right? Now, if I do the venous return graph and decrease. It should look like this. Or let's say we can even say this as look. This graph will say this this my this is my normal, right? That's this normal. And this is also my normal. Right? So really what happens, let's say I give a sort of like a venous motor drugs, like a venous constraint. So when the venous what happens? The cardiac output increases, so as my venous also increases, right? So because of that, there's a you, you see this graph, this requires of the venous return graph, right? And this represents your and this represents your cardiac. Output graph. You see what I mean? Now, now if I give the drugs, which is the veno dilator, that means this one is a veno, this is a cardiac output veno dilator, right? And then my venous return graph would be look like something like this. 
And then look, this is 8 meters mercury with the veno motor drugs. Veno dilator may be the blood even accumulated more, so they will decrease in cardiac output, right? This is 6 meters. So the, the shift on the graph too, on the list system in pressure, right? So now, if I look, there's a point here. There's a point here, so there's an A, the A, B, there's a, this is C is normal right here, right? So this is D here, this is E here, right? You can look. And we have to understand all of this graph because in the exam they might ask you all this, right? So basically the A is telling you about the venous return, right? The B is telling you the up and left, we're telling you about the uh, cardiac output, the contractility has in prison, right? This D is telling you about the, look, what is happening to D? D is telling you the contractility, E is telling you the venous return, right? That's right. Now, you can, you can even add more graphs into this one. Like, for example, if you add, like, resistance, I can make, because I don't want to make more confusions here, but then if you add, like, total pressure for resistance, then you can even compare the, uh, let's say, the TPR, right? Because usually with that case, what happens is that this curve will come together, and then they will you'll make, if there's increase in TPR, What's going to happen? There will be decrease in cardiac output, right? And then, but we just have this curve, this graph, there will be no addition to extra volumes or a loss of extra volume, so there would not be change in this volume. That's the only difference that you get to see this. Okay? Now, this is the whole how, this is the whole point of the graph, right? Like, quickly, like, for example, like, you know, uh, like, you know, this could be loss of blood, it could be like, we call them hypovolemic, right, conditions. This is going to be hypervolemic, right? And sometimes, like even you know, like for example, like I could if I want to make like it's a heart failure patient. If it's a heart failure patient, what happens there with the except for some of the conditions? Like for example, there are some of the conditions where they they call this concept of high high cardiac output failure, which basically means is that uh, the 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 body the I uh, immediately you see that in hyperthyroidism or even uh, some physiological conditions like pregnancy or like some conditions like belly belly there because of chronic deficiency or AV fistula to uh, or severe anemia too. What happens is that your your rate of the the metabolic demands of your body tissues is so much high that that even the heart will try to compensate by increasing higher cardiac output, but it's still it's not sufficient or it's not enough to meet that higher demands of the metabolic tissue. And we call that as a cardiac failures. And you see this this in some of the spe special cases, right? And usually the heart failures are located with uh, with the low cardiac output failures, all right? That's some of the conditions. And usually with the low cardiac output failures, usually you should you should have a graph, something that I would make. So let me make this a black bar, all right? Uh, let, actually, let me make this, yeah, in a black, uh, blue color in dotted line. So usually you look something like this. So very, very, this would, this would represent your, like, heart failure patient. Your graph of the cardiac output, right? No. This is something that I wanted to let you guys know about, right? So it's very important to understand this type of graph, right? And how with the with the positive anatomic drug, with the negative anatomic drugs, or with the arterial, arterial constriction, or with the arterial dilator, how this graph can actually shift, okay? And it's really, really important. And then it's also important that, you know, putting this graph into your pressure and volume relationship and also correlate like how increase in anatomic drugs, or decrease in anatomic drugs, how that can shift that that graph too, right? It is really important to understand understand this this phenomena because a lot of times it's a very, very testable, uh, testable phenomena, right? And I tried my best to actually explain to you guys uh, how these things uh, are can sift and change a graph. Uh, one of the important things that you should remember is that always remember that that you know with the uh, mean system feeling pressure, which basically tells you about the amount of blood that is actually uh, inside your your veins and arteries when heart is not working, okay, when heart is stopped working. And whenever they try to measure the pressure, that is a, that is an average pressure that they, they came out, right? So that's the mean system making pressure. And usually with the increase of venous return or more adding extra volume blood, there will be more blood volumes there, right? And that could actually change. But that does not change when there is an increase or decrease in your, uh, your systemic vascular resistance or your total pressure resistance, right? And I do want you guys to remember this equations with the venous return equations is equal to the PSF, I think I talked about earlier too, uh, which is the pressure system filling minus your right atrial pressure over your venous, uh, we can say your resistance over venous return, okay? Because this tells you about, about also, because this tells you about there is a, there is inversely proportional with the, uh, your resistance. There's a lot of resistance, that means, that means like, you know, the venous return will decrease, right? So that's something that's understand. Also, that the venous return is inversely proportional to right pressure. And if I could write it down, like here, let me write it down here. Okay, basically, 
If you increase your venous return, you decrease your right atrial pressure. Okay? And then if you decrease your venous return, usually you increase your right atrial pressure. But whenever you increase your venous return, what happens? There is a correlation of the increase in cardiac output. There is a correlation of the increase in cardiac output, right? That's something you have to understand. Uh, that also you have to understand. And one more thing is that whenever you increase your venous return, doesn't mean that it increases the cardiac output for both the side, left or right side of the heart. That you have to understand that, okay? Because I can give you one example. So for example, during the inspiration, what happens is that when you inspire, right? When you get inspired, what happens is that, well, obviously, a diaphragm contracts and diaphragm pulls, right? A pushes down, and so that increases the thoracic cavity, right? So the air comes in, right? So whenever you increase the, you, you open the thoracic cavity, that pushes the abdomen, so to actually compress the abdomen to increase the venous return. So venous return increases the inspirations of the right heart. So venous return increases, increases, which means cardiac output increases of the right heart. But during inspiration, the cardiac output decreases of the left side of the heart. Okay, because remember, your lungs, whatever the venous return cardiac output is going to work on the lungs, right? And the lungs also work as a reservoir, meaning lungs also hold some of the blood. Okay, so when, in that case, that, uh, the left heart, your, your blood decreases. Okay, but during expirations, if you expire, what happens is that the lung is collapsing now. And that lung, whatever they hold in the accumulated, they work as a reservoir of the blood, right? They hold that blood. What happens is they will compress and they'll stain the left heart. In that case, what happens is the venous return to the left heart increases, which means the cardiac output of the left heart increases during the expiration process. But the right heart, cardiac output, and venous return decreases during the expiration. These are some of the, you know, the some of the exceptionals that I wanted to let you guys know as well, right? And definitely work on this graph because it's very, very important to understand this graph really well. Because uh, there could be a lot of testable questions from this type of graph, right? Now.